Hello there guys and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines Offline Mode with me, P Siege. The short break is finally done, I'm finally a bit more free and open to continue on what we left at Puerto de Nara. So today we are going to look at the expansion of our city further into the planned downtown which starts with the layouting of roads as well as transport infrastructure that will make movement around the city much more comfortable and faster. I really enjoyed building this one as it made me really really excited and looking forward to finally designing the downtown. But I do know that I ha really have to pull some brakes first because I have to put out some other parts of the city before that one. Anyways, I've been really excited to share this. Uh, during my break, I've finally been able to save my way into buying a new monitor. So now I can record at a real 1080p resolution and it feels great that I am going to be able to improve the quality although you wouldn't be able to notice much of that yet except for some scenic shots or the intro since I recorded these builds back when I still had the lower quality monitor. This means a lot not only to the City Skyline series but also to Laugh It What which I am really pumped up to do once more so I hope that I'll be able to do it with you guys in this channel. But back to the build, uh, you just saw the route for the extension of the rail tracks. Initially, the plan was to make it overground, but then I came into the realization that the metro would pass over that place and I didn't want to overload that place with a lot of elevated tracks, hence the underground passage. And I think it looked well, especially with the steel truss look in the metro bridge. You may also have noticed that it's placed right in the middle of the road again, similar to our highway in the episode 2. I didn't want to disrupt the zones in the area where the metro would pass, so once again I had to split up the four lane road into two separate one way two lane roads. And the plan is for this road to extend up to about the entrance to the downtown where the metro track would also separate in its route by the road. And let me tell you that I am really really excited to see this avenue completed though at the same time I am also kinda nervous on whether this road would be a haven of traffic as it's inevitably going to be one of the main thoroughfares of the city. And actually as you can see I am even trying to plan where to put other important routes in the city. It's like some sneak peek for what we're going to do in the future episodes. Anyways as you can see this segment is not really that long as you might expect it to be but I am just really appreciative of the workarounds on the builds that may require mods. I know that this uh, what I did is kind of basic in a sense but this small stuff can make your city the city that you want it to be. It creates the flavor and yeah but without mods uh, there's some problems and difficulties here and there like what you are seeing right now but I try to remember that there are other ways to make something a little bit much more easier. So after connecting the section of the road where it connects back into a four lane road as the metro diverges, we are also going to develop this roundabout entrance to Puerto de Nara's downtown. And I hope that this one doesn't suffer the same fate as the very first roundabout that I built in the first episode, uh, I even use the same method right now. But looking back, it's actually kind of embarrassing that the first thing in the very first episode of the series that I featured doesn't exist anymore. And realizing that, I just want to laugh on that one. Well, anyways, the roundabout wasn't the only thing that I changed in this build. I am also reconstructing the early metro lines that I built to make way for more zones below, as you can see. And creating those curves was something that I was really enjoying the time and making those really smooth at least in my perspective makes the area appear much much more better although uh, I think there are some elements that I still want to put in this area to improve movement and that is something that we will remind ourselves when we come back to this district in the future episode Uh, 
And so with that out of the way, let's head on to the expansion of the city deeper into the planned downtown. And as you can see, the Riverfront Boulevard continues on with bicycle lanes in it as part of the city's bike lane service network. The boulevard also connects into the roundabout that we built. Uh, it took a little bit of time polishing the boulevard, uh, giving it a smoother route, and it panned out well. And we're ready to expand into the, this district the next episode. But we're already going to start kicking that part right now with new zones within the University District along the transportation hub. This area is mostly comprised of high density residential zones since I was trying to build up the population to unlock more assets in the game. And I accompanied this with some office spaces to provide for some employment. Although later on, I did change up a little bit in this area by placing some small commercial zones with in the district so the shops are a little bit more closer to the residents. All this led to the district being one of the densest parts of the city with a lot of tall buildings. It's one of those areas that I have to forego some aesthetics to max out on the population. Though I did use the historical buildings function to at least level out and control the height in some areas but I didn't apply it to all because I wasn't quite sure if the number of households would still grow the higher the level of the building is. Anyways, as you saw there, there is a, still a large uh, cluster of commercial buildings but its connection to the district isn't yet established. But the important thing in this episode is that we are preparing for what the city will need as it grows larger and that we are preparing the seeds for expansion and I just hope that it pans out well into the future. Anyhow, during all this build, the city encountered its first large debt wave and I had to build a new crematorium and cemetery so I was looking for a place to put it in until I realized that the whole section down here still lacked an open area and this space might help provide one so I decided to put it here instead of further down because I have different plans with regards to the use of the space further downtown. Although its placement might seem kinda awkward in a way, for me I think the cemetery and the park beside it strikes a right kind of balance in this densest part of the city. It offers a really nice break out here with all these different trees in the midst of this concrete jungle. And with this park, we also get most of the citizens near a public park, which is something that is being tackled, especially this time of pandemic where a lot of these spaces have seen a renewed interest. And to flesh this out uh, a little bit and make it much more interesting, we also added those bit of details that we've been uh, placing since then, like the benches, uh, pavilion, and tables. And that's it! Thank you for watching! You're seeing some higher quality clips right now thankfully but that also means that a lot has changed in this area since it is just recently shot and the city has moved forward a lot already. But if you like this video, please consider giving this a like, it's really really appreciated and you may also subscribe for more upcoming content.